I'm Reverend Rick, and it is my honor to be with you today. We really hope that this video is a blessing to you. And if it is, please consider making a donation. People watch our videos locally when they cannot necessarily come to church throughout the United States and the world. So please join us and click the link below and make a donation. Thank you, and let this be a blessing to you. The spiritual truth I am dealing with this morning is there is no place where God is not. Wherever we are, God is. Even when we think we are in the wilderness, God is with us. The promise comes this way. I will never leave you. I will never reject you. And there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. I am using Brene Brown's Braving the Wilderness, the quest for true belonging and the courage to stand alone. There's a particular quote in the book from Maya Angelou, which I've just been chewing on for the last three weeks, which means I'm going to share it with you. What a visual, right? <laughs> Gotta get one or two in. You are only free when you realize you belong no place. You belong every place. No place at all. The price is high. The reward is great. There is no one place, there is no one person, there is no one location that you are seeking that is going to make you feel like you belong. Because you belong everywhere. And everywhere that you show up, you belong. That is the joy of belonging. See, the true freedom is this consciousness where you understand and you know, despite all of these crazy ideas that we have, not only do we belong to God, we belong to ourselves. Yes, we can often feel like we're kind of lost in the wilderness, and but it's just those crazy thoughts that we have to get under control. Now, we do live in a world that is actually quite divided at times. You know how it is you either agree with me or you are against me seems to be the mode of the day. But that is learning how to get along. That is not belonging. Because we only belong to ourselves. I can't really belong to anyone else. See, all of life is connected. It is all beautiful. And it's all connected in such a wonderful way that it's only that love will actually maintain the relationships we have one to another. And without love and without the belief or the understanding of belonging, you will have suffering. <laughs> Always. A self-acceptance is not the same as self-esteem. See, self-esteem is a value judgment where you look at your life and say, I like this, but I don't like that. And here are the things I like which I choose to emphasize. Self-acceptance is not that way at all. It's much more broad. It says, I like this, and I don't like that, and I'm okay with both. Because you accept yourself. That is a global view. It is in this realization that we find that we have our best and settledness within ourselves. And I think it's kind of necessary for us to be happy. Because until you have self-acceptance, you will demonstrate probably some kind of protection strategy. Either you will only be with one particular group, you may pick up one particular habit, but more than likely, you won't be at peace with it. But first, stop keeping score on your life. It's not worth it. It really isn't worth it. Particularly if you're keeping score, then you're listening to all the other messages that are coming to you, saying whether or not you are okay or not. But once there is self-acceptance, you can stop working and working 
and working for a different field. See, I confess, and I have told you this before, I really like television. I really do. I admit it. It's just, and the secret of it all is this. Everything that I see, everything that I watch, once you decide to come up here and share your life, you always ask, can I use that? Just ask yourself, can I use that illustration? They're absolutely everywhere. But recently, I binged on the series Lost. Now, Lost is about a plane flying from Australia to Los Angeles that lands in a crash on a deserted island in the South Pacific. But let me tell you, I really binged on this thing. There are over 120 episodes. <laughs> there are six series of this. Now, I did not watch them all in the same day. But I will tell you this. <laughs> but I will tell you this. There were some nights when I felt if I could just get through one more episode on Netflix, and what I would do is I would stand up so I wouldn't fall asleep. <laughs> Am I the only one? Am I the only one? Saying, I don't think I'm by myself. I kind of belong to that crowd. Okay? So it's just modern day Gilligan's Island. For those of you who are my age, that's all it is, right? It's Gilligan's Island. There is no radio, there's no cell signal. Oh my God, panic has just arrived, right? There are 48 of them deserted on this island, lost in the wilderness. Have you ever been lost in the wilderness? Did you ever? Like, just wake up one day and say, where am I and what is going on in my life? The interesting thing about the wilderness is it's actually quite beautiful, right? But you cannot see the other side of the trees. There are strange smells, and you kind of hear stuff, and you're not particularly sure exactly what it is. But somehow, the fear comes because we just don't see our way out. Now, on this particular island, there are the others. Now, the others are just voices that they hear. They know absolutely not what they are. And there are a few smiles in the room, because there are a few people who have seen us. I see you. There are these voices, and all they do is torment them. And have you had those voices? Sometimes it sounds like your mama. Sometimes it sounds like a daddy, your grandmother, almost anybody. But you have those voices. But the darkness on this island is trying to overcome the light. And even though you feel that rescue or that you are coming out of the wilderness, somehow or another, you keep looking to get yourself out. There are all kinds of wilderness stories in the faith traditions. You've heard the story of Moses. We talked about the delivery from Egypt. But in all honesty, Moses had his own desert experience in the wilderness before that happened. And it was when he saw the burning bush that he recognized that God was with him. Jesus, same experience. Jesus decides to follow John. And immediately he ends up in a situation where he feels that he is alone. But he's not alone. See, the crisis comes when there is a perception that God is absent. The feeling that we don't belong and that we are all alone. But remember, we only need to change our mind about this experience. Because the one thing that Jesus did was, is that he remembered principle. And I suggest that we do the same. You have to remember that God said he will never leave us nor reject us. And that wherever we are, God is. So stop punishing yourself. The stunt that runs through our minds 
I'm going to give up. I'm not sure if God loves me. Why did this happen to me? Has anyone ever figured out the answer to that question? Why did this happen to me? Most of the time, we don't know. We just accept that it's true. Now, I have one great fear that I'm going to share with you. And that is, I do not like to look weak, ever. The idea of being vulnerable is not something I sign up for. And so therefore, often I draw these conclusions that I won't ask for help. I will just do it myself. But it's in those wilderness experiences that you find that you cannot do it all alone. You need God's help. See, without self-acceptance, it's hard to be happy. Because what you're trying to do is to belong to a group, but that's getting along. That's not belonging. We only belong to God and to ourselves. We are lost in the wilderness. We think we are alone. Our imagination runs away with us, and we think it will never end. But nothing will separate us from God. Again, my Angelou said, you are only free when you realize you belong no place. You belong every place, no place at all. The price is high and the reward is great. You belong wherever you are. Now, in Brene's book, she interviews Viola Davis. Now, I know when you saw this graphic, you thought it was how to get away with murder. <laughs> and if I could have figured out how to preach how to get away with murder, uh, I would have did. <laughs> but I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> she is the first African American to win an Emmy, a Tony, and an Oscar. But her life started out rough, baby. She says, three quarters of my life, I felt like a square peg in a round hole. Been there? beating yourself, trying to get into that big brown hole. So I know I've been there as well. Now, she grew up in Rhode Island. Excuse me for making a statement that's pretty limited. There are black people in Rhode Island. I didn't know that. <laughs> she said about herself, she says, I wasn't pretty. But it was a pretty traumatic life for her, poverty, father was an alcoholic and abusive, and she stopped her father from stabbing her mother in her throat with a pencil. She said, the only thing that I worried about was survival at this age. It was so traumatic, she was a bedwetter until she was 13. She said, I felt I was wrong. Not I did something wrong. I was wrong. That is a statement of being, which is tragic. So she said, I just had to focus on my survival, how I would eat, where I would shower, how I would get through the day. And I carried the shame into my adulthood, and I made some bad decisions as a result of it. But I did recover. Have you been there? Lost in the wilderness, not belonging? square peg in a round hole. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Minnesota, and I went to a philanthropy meeting on training about philanthropy. And everyone stood up, you know, one at a time and introduced themselves. Let's just say, when I described our community, I was the only one. <laughs> now, the interesting thing was, half of that group of people had to have a private conversation with me after they looked at our website and said, how do you put it all together? And I said, we follow an amazing woman and it's nothing but love. Square page.
See, self-acceptance is we learn to belong to ourselves and to God. And, and even when you don't feel it, you just have to understand the principle. So Viola says, she said, I learned some things in life. She said, I had to figure out that I would be okay. I just made a decision that I would be okay. But I will not add another person's opinion or criticism to my own load. What I feel about myself, I cannot add what you feel about me to it. See, I, no one can be responsible for their opinion of someone else. You cannot be afraid. She would say, you got to put it all out there if you want to make it. You just will never be satisfied if you just don't go all out. You better not leave anything on the floor. She summarizes it this way. This is who I am. This is where I come from. This is my mess, and I'm not adding your criticism to my mess. This is what it means to belong to myself. Let's return to Lost. <laughs> you can't leave them out there. So Lost, after six seasons, we get to the last episode. And I think they have to be rescued. This, this has to be it, right? They have to be rescued. American series movies don't have tragic ends. You got to look at European movies for that. You got to read subtitles for an hour and got to, oh, that's terrible. We generally have a good ending. So I just knew, you know, this is actually going to resolve. What's going to happen? So this is the setting. They are all in a room, all 48 of them slowly gather together in a room together. Oddly enough, there is a stained glass window with those symbols those symbols. Because at the end of it all, it all becomes clear that they were just never alone. We don't know if it was a dream, an out-of-body experience. We don't know if it really happened. But in the end, they understand they belong, and God was always with them. We have to embrace that truth. Getting along is what we have to do with other people, but we belong to ourselves and to God. See, we are not lost because each one of you is in the divine order of the universe. I don't believe the universe created waste. It all works together. God is everywhere we are because we bring God into that situation. So I would encourage you this morning, if you still feel like you don't belong, consider that circumstance getting along because you belong to yourself and to God.